Allison Rossi is the uh, Gill Crease Museum Director of Learning and Community Engagement, and she joins us with this segment of our get together. It's good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. A little bit about you. Where are you from? I was raised mostly here in Tulsa. So, so you're this a is my home. Girl. This is my home. Yeah, I lived in California, I lived in Colorado, New York, and Italy, but I wanted to raise my family here. So I've been back here for, I think, about seven years now. Well, tell me something. How, how did you get involved with the Gilk Greeks? Well, I joined the team about five and a half years ago as the Director of Learning and Community Engagement. And it's been a great time to join the Gilcrease staff because there's a lot of change happening. We're building a new museum, and that led to Gilcrease in Your Neighborhood, ultimately, the project that we'll be talking about today. Wow, what an opportunity. I mean, I've, I've, I've hung out over there. I like them folks. <laughs> uh, but there, there are exhibits that I've, I've wandered through and would go in and just stop. There's something about the way it draws you. Tom Gilcrease must have been one incredible buyer. And I know that he used uh, Woody Crumbo quite a bit. Woody was an old friend uh, long, long before he passed. But uh, good gosh, the things you have in your collection are astounding. It's an incredible collection. And there are new discoveries made really all the time, especially in our archives. So we're really excited to be able to share with the public more of what we have in lots of different ways, you know, in the building itself, through our digital collection. So uh, we can't wait to reopen the museum. Let's talk about this, uh, this thing called Gilcrease in Your Neighborhood. How does that work? What is it and how does it work? So Gilcrease in Your Neighborhood is a public art project. And before we closed, we knew we needed to think about how can we keep a presence in the community? How can we continue to serve the community? And so we had a series of community conversations, um, talking with all kinds of people from the public about what they wanted to see us do when we were closed. And the thing that people kept telling us over and over was that they wanted to see a pop-up exhibition. Well, we don't know what that means. You know, to lots of different people, it could mean lots of different things. Sure. So we began exploring different models of, of what that could look like and what would work with our staffing, you know, who is busy. Our staff is busy building a new museum, but also knowing that we really need to continue to serve people during this period. And so we finally came up with a model um, that you see now, Gilchrist in Your Neighborhood. And what it is essentially is right now we have a, a one-year project where we will have three works of art on display, one at a time, for about three months. And they're on display at 31 different sites across the Tulsa area. So really putting our work all over the city, um, parks and trails and libraries and markets and social services agencies, for people to encounter and see wherever they go in their daily life and to, to read a little bit about the work, um, to do a little activity connected to that work and also lots of public programs that we have connected to the work as well. Sounds to me like it's a made to order tour. You know, come see the Gilcrease here, 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 all over, all over Tulsa. Sure, yeah, and, and someone just the other day said, hey, can you send me a list of all the sites? And I said, sure, it's, you know, you can do a scavenger hunt and something like that if you want. It is the same work of art at all the sites at the same time though. And the reason that we decided to go with that model is I really have, am inspired by our friends at the library. Um, the One Book, One City programs that Tulsa is also a part of, Tulsa City County Library, I think have a really smart model um, to think about how can we get everybody looking at, talking about, creating, inspired by the same book for the libraries and for us, the same work of art. And so it is the same work of art at all 31 locations. Um, and then that work of art will change about a third of the way into the project and we'll have a new one. So it's a series of three works over one year that will be on display. Whose idea was this? You know, it's, it's a lot of people's ideas. I will say it's been evolving. So we, we began thinking about what's pop-up exhibition. We had conversations with our staff. Um, we had conversations with our community advisory council, all kinds of partners where we'll, we'll be displaying the work. So it is a collaborative effort pretty much every step of the way. Holy Toledo, I wish I'd thought of it. I'd have been over there knocking on your door. Well, come see it. I will. I hope you can see some of the sites. I will do that. And could you send us a list of where the, the different sites and the pieces that are going to be there? Absolutely. And I should say, too, that there is a digital footprint to the program. 
So in addition to having these physical sites across the city, you can learn a lot about the works of art that are on display and as well about the program and the different sites where the work is displayed through our website. So if you go to gilcrease.org, there's a Gilcrease in Your Neighborhood landing page where you can check out all of the sites. The 31 sites are listed there. And then there are all kinds of different ways that people can engage to learn about the work of art. So we have videos. Um, we have a pod, you know, excuse me, we have a, um, a playlist, a Spotify playlist. We have book lists that were created by the Tulsa City County Library. It's all inspired by this work of art. Um, a coloring sheet. We have a scavenger hunt. All kinds of things that people can do connected to that work of art to engage with it in whatever way that they want. So we hope that people can take advantage of some of those learning resources and just also encounter the work of art in the wild and have fun and be surprised to, to see it sure. and to do the fun things connected to it. Um, I should also add that there's an augmented reality experience. So there are two QR codes attached to the labels for the work of art. And if you scan one of them, it allows you to take your smartphone and stand in front of the work and to animate the work. And um, it's, it's just a moment, I think, for people to be enjoying something playful and fun connected to that artwork as well. We got about a minute and a half. Before I let you slip out of here, I gotta know, how often will the art turnover be? And second, if there are other companies out there that would like to be involved and bring a piece to our company, how do they go about it? Sure, yeah, so I'll answer the first question. And each work of art will officially be on display for a, for a little over three months. So the next new installation we have will be February 21st. Then we'll have a third installation on June 21st. So we'll have those three rotations throughout the year. And could there be more sites? Um, I think that's a great question. One of the things that we're open to right now is how will this evolve? So we have the set kind of program for the year but we also hope that it can continue beyond that. And business involvement, people sponsoring sites, um, I would love to see how this kind of takes a turn grassroots wise. You know, maybe a coffee shop mm -hmm. or a restaurant wants to name a drink after something inspired by what they see, or there are yoga poses that people create. Um, we, we right now, I think, are relinquishing a lot of control by putting artwork out in the public. And that's really exciting because we don't know what people are gonna do with it, but we know that there are lots of creative ideas we haven't thought of. Well, Allison, thank you for coming by. Thank you for letting us in on the ground floor to watch this thing grow, which it will. You're gonna get companies knocking on your door saying, hey, hey, bring that here. You know? I hope so. Thank you so much for having me and for being interested in talking about the project. Oh, we'll talk more down the road. Thank you again for coming by. Take care. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. We're going to take a little break here and we'll be back with more right after this.